Hey guys, welcome back to Star Wars Year by Podcast. I'm Halls from Blue Harvest. I got my buddy Steel from Steel Wars here. It's our 36th episode. What's up? Going through the uh, Star Wars Year by Year book. And uh, since we have a rule, a steel rule that every third episode gets to go up on the free feed instead of just the Patreon. Everybody gets to hear this one because it's yeah, it, divisible by three. We're also dangling a bit of bait out yeah. there. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Because like, like, you can go back, drop your three bucks on either mm-hmm. Patreon, and you got thirty-five other episodes good to go. Timeless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Timeless trips down memory lane. Mm-hmm. Lots of talk about carl and mcdonald's and spaceships and toys and lots of spaceship and toys and also ends <laughs> and um and final wearing mavericks oh <laughs> you know i've been trying to find that documentary you were telling me about the one that has a lot of stuff about marsha lucas in it and i still haven't been able to really locate it it's called Hollywood Icons, Star okay. Wars Uncovered, or something like that. Okay. But it's ex- it, it's very good. I, I would like, um, it would be a good discussion point. Okay. Yeah. I'll see if I can't find it. Because it really explains the prequels. <laughs> no, I, like, in all honesty, it just like, because I, I just remember, like, after the prequels, just like, what's, <laughs> he's changed, what's different? <laughs> It's this Marsha Lucas. Mm. But anyway, this is our uh, one of our Patreon exclusive uh, little bits of material where we go back in uh, Star Wars history as we page through the, oh, it's been there the whole time, uh, the Star Wars year by year of visual history, updated and expanded edition. Um, for the sickos there that like to read along, your neens. Or, and they watch along on YouTube also. Um, it's page 140. Look at us. 36 episodes in, 140 pages in. Look at us. Banging. Hey, um, it is a history podcast, but I I, uh, I don't have anyone to talk t- to this about beforehand probably. Mm-hmm. But this morning, just a little bit of modern day, this, this one day we will be reading this out. Oh, wow. That's... Um, <laughs> I like that positive thinking, buddy. Let's go with it. Just keep going. <laughs> keep rolling. You don't think we're going to get, you don't think you're going to make it or you don't think um, they're going to have the even more updated and expanded edition. Oh, no, I'm positive. We got it. We're going to make it and okay. they're going to have the updated book. Hey, uh, would you be able to turn down your headphone sound just a little bit? I feel like I'm getting a, a little bit of kickback how's that how's that uh there's a little bit oh yeah i don't know maybe i'll just put this microphone a bit further away there there you go i think this that that will that will stop it can you still hear me a okay yeah i can still hear you all right fantastic but um yeah this morning sweet poster oh yeah acolyte bloodstains lightsabers trailer tomorrow yep and it's coming out june 4th the show that doesn't mean anything though does it what do you mean oh you're saying it like it was like good old june 4th no no that that's just the day (laughs) it's coming out so a little less than three months oh that'll It'll fly by. That means, oh, I was going to say that means I'm going to Australia. And I'm like, yeah, I probably will be in Australia in June. I'm all, I, I, I've never been in the one country for any of these after COVID. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, I've always bounced back. So it's always, that's why I'm always talking to you and you can hear like kookaburras and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Those calls where you're out of the country are real fun. (laughs) The critters. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I'm so excited because it's just a, like, you know, like where like the last half of the Mandoverse went just, it was haywire for, for many different reasons. Uh, and, and, and Andor was just banging and, and just to get a fresh slate again. 
yeah oh i mean this one's real exciting to me because it's kind of like uh the first time we're gonna see that era on screen so i'm pretty excited for it i think it's got gonna be pretty exciting and with all respect to um my australian brethren and my uh, american set mates best star wars is english star wars all right okay Come on, buddy. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I definitely will, buddy. Let's think about it. Let's think about it here. Rise of Skywalker. English Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom Menace. English yeah. Star Wars. It's Great it, Star Wars. All it needed was a bit of Marsha Lucas. Yep. yep. And, and that's all it needed. Like, it, oh, it's just so. And when you think about the Phantom edit and stuff, it's just like, oh, because that's what he re-edited it for a version that I like far more. Right. And Marsh, Marsha Lucas was an Oscar-winning uh, editing savant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, also in sort of modern but throwback news, I'm very close to having my um, original Kenner figures re-lined up. Nice. Hey, let me ask you, do you do anything special to keep them standing in the case of an earthquake? I've got them on figure stands, but okay. like, I, I, I don't know. I haven't, um, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get, I get the feeling though, that if they get knocked over, I'm going to have bigger things to worry about that day. Probably. You're probably right. You're probably yeah. very right. All the earthquakes, um, I never, yeah, I don't feel them enough. Like, you know, you see on Twitter, because LA, there's there's a fair few mm -hmm. um, compared to Australia where there was like, there, actually there was one in uh, just where I, like that we felt where I lived in South Yarra and the guy that ran the building, like this old legendary dude that knew, like he was sort of involved in show business in the 60s and stuff, this guy mm -hmm. Dot absolute gun of a dude and he was interviewed for it like on the news that's how big a news an earthquake was in melbourne nice that uh, I, uh i've never experienced an earthquake oh and guess what we were doing while we were watching a uh, while um the earthquake was quaking what was that lost oh for the first time as well oh. first run through so we we're just like is a smoke monster here? Yeah, man. Hey, um, so we're cracking into page 140. It's uh, the second half, August, December of 1988. So uh, the darkest of times. Mm -hmm. But there's some bangers in here. I, I think it's okay. a good... I think it's a good spread. Have you found your book by the by by the surprise in your voice? It feels like you have not found your book, no, buddy. Now I have. Um, let me tell you what I've done, buddy. I have Tetris myself out of a section of my basement in my house because there's too many boxes. Now that book is in one of those boxes. So the only recourse I have at this point, because of how I've been moving everything around, is to just start unpacking boxes and get into the pile of boxes that way there's no more moving boxes around to get to other boxes it's it sure is something so um i don't know why that's not zooming out that, that's where we're at uh okay, okay. Do, do you want to uh give that one a crack on the uh Absolutely. August of 1988, specifically August 12th, Tucker, The Man and His Dream premieres, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and executive produced by Lucas. The biographical film stars Jeff Bridges as Preston Tucker and Martin Landau, Space 1999, as financier Abe Carrots. The story of Tucker's fight against the big three automobile manufacturers as he struggles to bring the 1948 Tucker sedan to market is shot in California's Marin County. Tucker receives positive critical reviews and lukewarm box office results, although Landau does, an, does earn an Academy Award. Oh, sorry, I just took that down for you. No problem. Uh, award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Lucas acquires one of the surviving Tucker automobiles 
for his own personal collection. Oh man, that car is sick. That green on that car is sick. What a it shade. Is- it is a good green. And then with the white sidewalls, mm-hmm. it, if you're just listening to the podcast, it's sort of like, it looks like it could be in the Thunderbirds with the marionettes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does look sick, but it looks like a prick to reverse park. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Something tells me. Oh, it's got um, the reverse doors on the back too. I'm not into that. I would be running into bits of metal and <laughs> and then Harry trying to open the back at the same time as it's no Tucker chill out bro mm-hmm. just some things are um just to stick with what's already invented there were only 51 of those cars ever made all right hmm hey um you think Lucas still has that Tucker yeah, I bet it's going to be in that museum. <gasps> of course it is. Of course it is. Good call. Well, that's got to be opening before too, too long, right? I feel like mm. they've been working on it forever. Yes, and I don't think it opens till next year, to be honest. Okay. Or maybe the year after. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's 2025, and I read that last year. So that's why I'm like, oh, two okay. years away. That's Okay, that could be. But it's getting... Um, it's looking pretty good. Like we go past, I haven't been past the construction for a little bit. It's down near the museums and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, it's definitely a lot more closer to the concept drawing than how it looked before. Okay. That's cool. But it's been like watching like the enterprise get built. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sick. Hey, uh, but uh, Tucker, a man in his dreams, Wait there, I've just got to make sure that phone ringing is not mine. No. Um, I'm still I'm still hearing myself a little bit on yours. If you can just just turn down the volume on your computer of hearing me. Right, that's that's what I've been. Oh, okay, cool. Every time I say it, you'll lean back, and I'm just like, well, you can't lean back for the whole time. Right. Anyways, have you seen this film? I haven't. It's a movie that I knew George Lucas like <clears throat> had some involvement in, but I've never seen it. I'm not sure if I have, but yeah, I, I, I sort of, I feel like I haven't. Like even when I was doing my 90s backtrack through all things George Lucas, I feel like I got to that and I was just like, Nah, for me. I don't know about this man and his dreams. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm glad he had them, but <laughs> but that maybe oh, I'm I- going to ask if you had a trailer ready. I should have known you did. Let's 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 check it out. Oh my god! This man had a lot of dogs. Car of tomorrow, today. Whoa! And you know who's gonna be- Ah, Slater! We are. This is revolutionary. Did you see Christian Slater? I did. I think we need it in 60 days or never. It's impossible. Oh. <laughs> they, they hadn't invented the car jack yet. No, but clearly not. I wonder if that became a part of Tucker's um, dreams Dream, as a yeah. man. <laughs> Detroit. They're putting the squeeze. Uh, this is a new this is for a restoration. So it doesn't yeah. have doesn't have that a eighties like trailer like, quality to no, it. No, no, because it, it's probably just a guy going, Tucker was a man. And, and these a dream. and these are his dreams. Wait there, I've got to find the old school one. This is oh, the actual, this is the money yeah, right here. Yeah, see we've got the old Paramount things spinning around. Thanks, video detective. Preston Tucker and his family began to build. You, what did I tell you about the voiceover? You were 100% right. It even starts with the same shot as the other trailer, too. The car of the future today. Whoa. Is there anything you want to explain first about the dogs? Well, I uh, traded the old Packer for them. They would challenge the automotive giants in Detroit. Is there anybody in this room who can look me in the eye and tell me we can't do it? Building 
Getting your car in your barn is one thing, but mass production, that's something else. The idea is the counts, eh? The dream. It was almost too good to be true. Detroit. They're putting the squeeze on. We can't buy stale, we can't buy anything. So that was a shiny red car. It was shiny as hell. Detroit's putting the, the moves on them too. Dude, that you have to go watch this trailer to see how red a car could be. <laughs> Let me the point of Senator Ferguson. What do you think? A big smile and a pat on the back is going to make him forget he's a senator from Detroit? It's an idea of yours, selling dealerships for cars that don't exist. What did he say? He said, stay out of the car business. Tucker built the thing. Well, not everything he advertised, not yet, but enough right now to cost billions just to keep up with it. You don't understand how powerful the forces are that are working against us here. Ever since you road tested the new car, 40 G men have been following you around the clock. What for? You make the car too good. I will, don't worry about it now. I'll take care of it. Hey, Mr. Tucker, we're from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh oh. The only thing Mr. Tucker designed was an elaborate scheme to defraud. Why would they do something so stupid like that if they know we can prove it's a lie? And if enough headlines say that I'm a crook, well, that's the end of me in the car, which is what this whole thing's all about, isn't it? If you're not careful, you're going to spend the next 20 years of your life in prison. And we are going to fill that car, the one we dreamed of, exactly the first we want it. <laughs> a Lucasfilm production of a Francis Coppola film. Big business closes the door on the little guy with a new idea. We're sabotaging everything that the country stands for. These are like pages straight out of George Lucas's diary, I feel mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. If they can make headlines with lies, we can make bigger headlines with the truth. He is dead. Oh, the tiger! Tucker, the true story of one man and his dream. <laughs> That's so close to what I said the voiceover it's, would say. It's very close. <laughs> Tucker. Oh, they didn't even put the subtitle there. It was just Tucker coming this August to a theater near you. Banging. Love it. I wonder how much money that movie made. Let's see. That's, I can look that up. That, that's your end of research. Yeah, I got you. I got you, buddy. <clears throat> A man and his dream. All right. And it says its budget was twenty-four million, and it made nineteen point seven million. Uh, uh, sounds like it was the solo of its day. <laughs> yeah, I think it made about as much money as Tucker did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I will get this next one. It's uh, where are we going? Window. I cannot do this without saying what I'm doing. It's so frustrating. I think, no, I think that's good. It's a good habit to be in. September down to Australia, star walking. The Star Wars Appreciation Society of Australia is launched. 1988. Look at you. Look at you guys uh, getting a whole... It's not even an also in. It's main page material. Yeah, you know why they've got the date, right? Like, it's not an also in. It's because the people that started it are just straight nerds that, like... Are very organized and keep dates like at, oh, so at, they know exactly the date it was founded and everything. oh yeah because they've got they're so um i was all, always impressed and sort of like uh, maybe a bit stunned that they had all this formal like there was a secretary and a, an associate like they had all positions oh, like in the structure and yeah, um, yeah 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 like a, a committee and um very organized but i um I remember going into Minotaur Books. So they started in 1988. I guess just in 1988, I wasn't looking to join a Star Wars fan club. Wait, wouldn't this have been nine? I thought this was 89 or 90. 80. No, no, no. 88. Sorry. Did I, did I go back to saying 98? Um, it's so hard to say 88 now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But anyway, all my, all, yeah, I always go to the straight to the 90s. But anyway, I was thinking 
I don't think I would have, I don't think I discovered the fan club until like 1994, maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah, I feel like that was when I discovered it. So then I was thinking, oh my God, I didn't know about it for all this time. What a waste. Because, you know, between then is like half a decade. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, in 1988, I, I definitely would not have been seeking out Star Wars fan clubs to join. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, I was probably maybe just in high school. So, yeah, that was – high school works different in Australia. It starts earlier. But anyway, oh, well. the um, – but yeah, that I definitely wouldn't have been. Um, I actually remember when, towards the end of high school, setting up my, or maybe it was just after high school, but just setting up my Star Wars toys in my room again. Because mm-hmm. oh, I did it because this guy Jason Rothmeyer, who was a pro skateboarder, he had a like an interview in four one one, and I did the podcast about it ages ago with him, and um, he had his Star Wars collection out. So then I was like, oh, that looks dope. And then mm-hmm. it like cool guy permission to do it because it's like, right. mm-hmm. well, Pro Skater did it. And I um, oh, just see that little thumb up that came. Yeah. Uh, it was sweet. little bonus there, a little uh, mm-hmm. CGI for the uh, YouTube viewers. Um, but, yes, I remember just I was just getting into Star Wars where I would I was sort of like yearning. I was like, oh, that would be they, – they need to invent the internet or something. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I can, I can have people hate me for liking it. But anyway, the um, – and I remember finding the flyer for it in Minotaur Books – and just going, oh, and the and the and they had the meetings listed for the year, and the and the a meeting had just passed, and then the next meeting wasn't for like three months, and just like going, oh, the agony, the agony of having like so I. J- let me ask you: Did you ever go to a Star Walking meeting like early days before the prequels and stuff? Oh, oh. Pre prequels and special editions. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, how was that? Ah, oh, because it, it, it was so hard. It was pure old school Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So like they'd have the auctions and stuff, and it would just be vintage toys and oh, sick. And and like the real hot things for me were when people and we'll talk about this a bit later on the episode would go to Skywalker Ranch, like they'd travel and then they'd buy. T-shirts and like Lucasfilm. I've actually got. That's that's why I've got one because I always love them in the auctions. Yeah, and and so they they'd, they'd buy an extra T-shirt to sell at the auction. And I remember I got a like a khaki camel T-shirt with a tonal Lucasfilm embroidery just in the on the breast pocket, mm-hmm. but it didn't have a pocket, and it was sort of like skate styled, like that sort of embroidery thing. And it just going, this is the dopest T-shirt that ever existed. That's sick. That is sick. I want to uh, go to Lucasfilm so bad just to go to the gift shop. It's so silly. I just want to go there. That was that was one of my. Uh, that was definitely like we we get to go to the gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. First question I'd ask, they'd be like, "You want to see the Yoda fountain? Is it on the way to the gift shop?" That's what it, I want to know. It is. No, I bet it is. <laughs> but um, and then years later, I, I I did all the premieres, like the midnight premieres. That was always in conjunction with with Star Walking, and um, you know, came good, you know, sort of good mates with a bunch of people that um that ran it and and were members and stuff. And recently, um, I got made a, a lifetime honorary member. So that's pretty sick, my dude. Look yeah. at you. I don't know if I'm meant to get a plaque or something. You I, better. I, I get the the zine emailed me to me every month. But um I don't know if you're in Australia you get a I, I would like a plaque. I, I might make myself my own plaque. I think you should. If they I'm don't po- if they don't pony up for the plaque, I think you gotta take it into your own hands, buddy. Like like perspex. Yeah. Yeah. Steel Saunders, lifetime member of Star Walking. Is it Inc.? Yeah. Star Walking Inc. 2024 or whatever year it was established that you were a lifetime member. 
was like last year or the year before. I think it was on May the 4th, maybe. I don't know. Nice. They surprised, they did an interview with me on a live stream and they surprised me at, with it at the end. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. This next one is um, pretty sick. Ooh. Do you want me to handle this or are you going to take this one? You go for it because it's an easy one to read. Discover. September On the screen, because Hollis doesn't have the book. That's what I'm... I'm. <laughs> either either way is fair, buddy. Let's be honest. You've heard me read emails. No, but if someone's just like watching this on YouTube for the first time, and they're like, whoa, that's... <laughs> September 29th. Following 1986's Challenger disaster, NASA finally resumed <laughs> space shuttle missions with the successful launch of the space shuttle Discovery. Now, listen. I've been watching this show, this documentary, mm -hmm. for all mankind. It's on Apple. I was about to ask where that was. Yeah, and it reveals the true history of space flight. And and did you know that there's like bases on the moon with Russians and Americans? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I had to, I had to like in my brain configure my response to be as PG 13 as possible, but yeah, hell yeah. That's do what you, I like to hear. Do you know what this show is about? I don't, I don't. It's, it's pretty fascinating. It's an alternate history. Like if what if happened, if the Russians were the first to the moon, Okay, so it's an alternate history sort of related around the space ra race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all, retro, it's all retro and stuff. And, um, yeah, so the, every, like, the conceit is that, that everything in history is the same, but then the Russians get to the moon first, and then how that changes right, that's where it hi history. And, um, oh, like it, this is fictionalized and it, and it, it, it does like the way the, cause the technology goes faster because it's competition. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, it's a lot easier in the show to go into space than I feel like it would be in real life. <laughs> okay. All right. But even so like screw going into space. Oh, man. You know, when I was a kid, I thought it would be awesome to go into space. And now as I get older and like, you know, there's people that tried, you know, they have like those and they're very expensive where you can take a trip into sort of like the very beginning of space. No, thank you. Mm -mm. No, thanks. Not for me. I might be up for that. You think? Yeah, but just the going into space like the. The, the the engines that have to get you through the, the atmosphere, atmosphere and stuff yeah yeah i don't know no buys at all and <laughs> I, and the stuff that happens in this show mm -hmm. like the dangers in space and the things that it's just like nah check it so, okay couple questions is the show set like post like is it modern day quote unquote but just after the the branch off in the timeline where russia makes it to the moon first or is it like set in the 70s 80s you know what what's going on there i don't know where it ends up because i'm only halfway through of what's up already and it's mm -hmm. still in production i know because i'm in it do you get to go to space i'm a cameraman oh hell yeah but in i've space. been to no, dude. <laughs> um, I was talking to someone about it, and because um, I was saying to Jackie, like, oh, I, it's because I, I watch things now, and like, I like there's one scene where there's like way too many extras for this hallway, and I'm like, what are they doing? It's just out. Mm -hmm. I, like, I see all that stuff in the back because it's kind of funny. But um, the one thing that came up in my head to Jackie, I was just like, how cool is it that there's a moon set somewhere within mm -hmm. half half an hour of where we are? We could go to this mm -hmm. moon set. And I talked to someone the other day that has, like, they were on the same lot and they've seen the moon set with the door open. And it's just like, oh, it's so sick. 
That's awesome. So I need you to do me a favor when you have the time, buddy. I don't have Apple TV. I'm interested in another sci-fi show on there called Foundation. I hear it's good. G- 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 watch a couple episodes for me when you have the time and report back because I don't know. It's you know, I don't know if I'm ready to make the commitment to another streaming service just for one show. Oh, but I yeah. heard it's good too. The um. The the Apple TV, I, they make it very hard to share the account. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's doing that lately. Because they've got the iCloud. It all links to iCloud. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's quite ingenious. It makes it really easy to sign in mm-hmm. if you're the person. Yeah. Anyways, um, I because I put out a tweet saying, because we're out of things to watch after we finish The Americans, and I'm very picky about what I'm going to, the next one on the list, yeah. Yeah, so I put out a tweet saying, hey, what of the sci-fi shows on Apple TV are, are good? And um, they said, the mo- like, there was lots of recommendations, but the main one was that one, For All Mankind. And the and the, and the idea, like, the concept of it is like, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a cool concept, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's really good. I'm, I'm, like, we are in. Yeah. Like we're so watching how many seasons are up so far. four already. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love something that's got a bunch to dive in and catch up on. So, um, but yeah, the whole thing of like all those boosters underneath and you're sitting on, on top, like it's, it's just, mm, no dangerous. Yeah. And just, just things happen in space. Mm hmm. Take my chances in LA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, whores. You want me to handle this for you? The Skywalker Library. No, no month or date for this one. No, it's in I- it's in September. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you don't have the book. You don't yeah. see how it's laid out. Uh, <laughs> but let, let, let's just take in that picture. That's a sick picture. That dome, that stained glass dome in the ceiling it's just got like it just looks like it's been there for 500 years i know i know you think they got any uh graphic novels on those shelves i don't know they had some in the in the lobby at uh lucasfilm i can confirm that and some eu but um that the double story uh library with the curling um stick like it is just like it looks like one of the 10 best bookshops in the world. Right. It looks like a movie set. That don't have books that I'd be interested in. Right. Exactly. There's one down um, in LA downtown, the last bookstore or something. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful. But, oh, never bought anything from there. Yeah. It's, it's probably a little too highbrow for my interest. Wow. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll high end Jacqueline has, but, um, but not I. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The Skywalker Ranch Research Library acquires Paramount's own library when the studio can no longer maintain the budget for proper library maintenance. The acquisition triples the overall size of Skywalker Ranch's collection. The Ranch Library also acquires the personal audio tape collection of Joseph Campbell, which contains lectures recorded throughout his career. Do not wag school. Eat your greens. <laughs> Be a hero. Eat your mm-hmm. greens. Mm-hmm. Joe Cambo. Um, and in the little caption, it says, the Paramount collection includes the copy of Ben-Hur that was checked out by legendary film director Cecil B. DeMille in 1927. So... That library card, there's, there's a picture of a library card there. Mm-hmm. That's either mocked up or he never took the book back. Or maybe, yeah, that's a good question. Because then, like, well, unless he kept it, he left it in the book when he returned it. No, but then there'd be other borrowers underneath. There would. You're right. He checked that bad boy out and never returned it. He's gonna have Bookman in, on his case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That 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 Bookman, the character in Seinfeld, 
God, that is <laughs> funny. Like you can see what Seinfeld like cracking up. That mm. he's just like, oh man, that that is funny. There's a. I saw something online yesterday, and uh, I'll say I don't know which movie it's from. It's one from one. Of no, the- no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I don't mean to cut in. You should just say to someone just the first half of that sentence and just stop. Just say I saw something online yesterday. Yeah, what? what uh? <laughs> just leave it there. I just saw something online yesterday. What have you been doing? Uh, oh, I saw something online yesterday. <clears throat> it was um, and a funny uh, and <laughs> example of somebody breaking in a movie. Okay. They left it in. And it's from one of the Fast and the Furious movies. And it's Tyrese and Ludacris at a barbecue. And um, the rock walks in and it's apparently it was an, it was uh ad lib <laughs> sounds like my right? dream last night and uh i can't remember what tyree says to the the rock but the rock says well you need to watch out because of that big ass forehead and ludicrous next to tyree breaks and they left it in the movie and i was like damn the rock roasted him with a fucking ad lib dang man i smell what you're cooking Dwayne. well you know the rock's going off at the moment Oh yeah, there's. I've seen a lot of rock stuff, and it just kind of passes over my head because I don't know. I'm not m- much interested in m- too much that The Rock has ever done in his career. No, but he's back on wrestling. Oh really? I didn't even know that. Damn. Oh really? I'm surprised that your mm-hmm. pop culture radar has not like. It, mm-hmm. Oh, because you know wrestling's in it like a peak at the moment. Like oh, it's really yeah, it's making a gang of cash, um, and. Yeah, and 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 in in the news for all sorts of amazing and disgusting. Yeah, the reasons. only one that uh, that crossed my radar was, you know, somebody doing a little bit of a Josh Trank maneuver. Yeah, oh, not even, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but um, it's having a uh, like a huge um surge, and um that's been pushed along even further by the return of the rock. And he's like a bad guy. Okay. And, and, and if you thought he dissed Tyrese, he's going like off, like he's in the old, he's doing like his old nineties character. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very entertaining. It's WrestleMania season. Did you know that horse? Oh, I guess it is coming up on that, right? It's the showcase of the immortals, the granddaddy of them all. Hmm. <laughs> I have a, you know, in um, in the Phantom Menace when they put that big Gungan shield up, you know what I'm talking about to protect from. That's I have that shield up against wrestling. And the only time it something passed through that shield when when, when there was some caca poo poo involved, and I was like, oh well, that's messed up. No no surprise there though. That steals a freak. No, no, nothing. It didn't make me go, damn, Steel's into this? What's wrong with him? I was just like, this is not surprising at all. Of course, that dude's an asshole. Anybody that works behind the scenes in wrestling is an asshole. I wouldn't go that. No, 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 no. A large. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. This is. Come on, Steel. Let, give me this one, buddy. Give me this one, Steel. Yeah, I didn't click. I didn't <laughs> click. <laughs> I have uh, this. <laughs> Oh, no way. Mm-hmm. All right. The the next article is about um the emergence of herpes, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I think it's been around a little longer than 1988. Wouldn't know. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. Don't have it. <laughs> I have this. Oh, man. You got me with that one. <laughs> That's all the time we got for... <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Okay. Um, October Assault on Hoth is released by West End Games. This board recreates the epic struggle of Rebel Snowspeeders versus Imperial Walkers. Uh, Assault on Hoth is a two player Star Wars board game. The picture shows some sort of booklet, a mm-hmm. box filled with. Um, Little miniatures. Little okay. monop- Monopoly-style pieces that I can't make out. And then a map. 
Are any of those plastic pieces walkers or just hotels that are meant to represent walkers? So I'll, let me look because I have that and I just saw this this copy of this that I have um, for the first time in life. Uh, I think it's oh, I think it's cardboard cutouts that you bend over. I've got it zoomed in. It looks like folded up cardboard in there or something. Um, which is like if it was little plastic micro machines, it'd be like, oh, yes, pretty sick. Like, which is sort of oh, what they, no, buddy, how they do it now. Sick. What? I'm looking at the game pieces. Well, oh. might be a newer version. So the ones I'm looking at here look like they, yeah, they have actual little yeah, pieces. But, but on the screen, they, they look like just folded up pieces of paper. But with a fold. Yeah. It's hard to tell on that. That's why I wanted to look. Um, so I bought this at a comic book store used. And the guy was like, hey, I think all the pieces are in there. And then I never played it. Um, and then I didn't think about this board game for years until I moved into my new house and my parents were like, Hey, now that you have a house, we're going to bring all this dumb star Wars shit. Yeah. And that's when I saw that board game for the first time. I didn't open it. Um, I just sent you a picture of the little pieces on what Twitter. But they're pretty sick. They're they're definitely nowhere near as detailed as the pieces you would find in like a modern Star Wars board game. Um, but they're definitely little walkers and soldiers and and uh, snow speeders and stuff. Okay, I see that they are sick and they're painted and they're little. Mm -hmm. But um, that paper that it, it you can tell it's different. It's a different oh, version. Look at this. My man is doing real research here. Look at that. You're right. Well, no. I don't know. Want to compare the two? No, oh, you're right. The hexagons, like the little tiles that they go on, are different. Yeah, they're far more pronounced on the new version. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it might have just been little cardboard pieces in the original run. I don't know how many runs of this game they did. All right. This is an interesting one, Hawes. Right there, I'll get some zoom going. Uh, Tibet. November, a group of Tibetan monks visit Skywalker Ranch to use the scoring stage's unique acoustics to record an album of chants. The 21 monks are members of the Gaito, Guto, Gayuto order. Hors, have a... I think you might have been closer with the last one, the Gayuto order, I think. And then there's a pic of them um, chilling. Like headwear. It's Skywalker Ranch, yes. Um, and, like, what a sly move mm -hmm. by one of these monks. Mm -hmm. It's just really like a, li Wars. a little a little too into Yoda. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is a way I might be able to get to that latex model. We'll, we'll record a couple chants on the ranch. I got to look this album up. <laughs> I got to check it out. Really? Oh, I just want to know. Like, I got to hear it. This whole album right. recorded at Skywalker Ranch. These six dudes here, they look sick as hell. God, you've really got a, a 90s level desperation for anything Lucasfilm. Yeah, right. It's really it's really hitting here lately. No, I just I got to check it out. I, like, I'm not saying it's going to be in heavy rotation on my Spotify. But might be, who knows? Maybe I really get into it. It, it. It's so weird that on the same app you can listen to Tibetan monks chant or <laughs> jo, or, or Joe Rogan. It's just like a there he uh Yeah, yeah. The land before time whores. This is in. I think this must be in December. Oh no, this must be November. I don't know. It's one of these months. I'd say it must be November, actually. Um, oh, yes, there is a November date. November 18th. Uh, the animated dinosaur adventure, The Land Before Time, is released to theatres, directed by Don Bluth. Oh, of the, of, um, the Bluth Company or whatever that 
company was called, and executive produced by Lucas and Spielberg. The film follows the five young dinosaurs. I remember working out, going, hey, this produced by, this doesn't mean it's like Star Wars. <laughs> right, right. What a rot. Um, it follows five young dinosaurs on a quest to reach the safety of the Great Valley. Uh, Bluth, a maverick who had left behind the Disney studio system to open up his own competing animation shop, had previously collaborated with Spielberg on 1986's American t- An American Tale. Says Lucas, Steve had an idea and a baby di- and about baby dinosaurs, and he wanted me to executive produce it. Yeah, to to griff the system. Um, with him since its first release there have been 12 Land Before Time sequels do you reckon executive producer does he get any any kickback on the on the sequels or is this a contract by contract case I wonder case? if it lists him I wonder if he and Steven Spielberg are still listed as executive produced in like the 13th Land Before Time hmm. but um, this was Due to my age, I've never seen this because it came out in a time where I'm like, you know, teenagers aren't hitting up the land before time, I don't think, that heavily. But my awareness of it was because of this parody skateboard graphic in, in like, 92 or 93 by World Industries, who would then go on to make the uh, Flame Boy and Deviled Man characters. I know those. I know those. But um, in this one, the dinosaur eats the green dinosaur. And you can see there's a big chunk of oh. meat left out of him. And the other dinosaurs are... Um, Poor guys. Very concerned for their friend. So upset. <laughs> <laughs> Man, was- if, if, you got, if you're ever hang, hanging out with Harry and he, he's like, I want to watch Land Before Time, don't do it, Steve. Or steal. Emotional damage. Emotional damage, the opening of that movie. Oh, thank you. Good call. Yeah, I, for I, real. Like I, that's a that's a buddy to buddy thing there because it emotionally damaged me as a kid. All right, good. I am I am pro- I am open to emotional damage, so I appreciate that. I um. Then we've got some also's. Oh, also wins, bro. Is it a good one? Oh, it's so good. Oh, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> Man, I'm going to be able to make a sweet mashup of things that you said this episode. <laughs> Man, that is a good one. It's a, uh, let me see, Panasonic? Is that a Panasonic ad? I don't know. This one, like the caption does say, oh, so anyway, I'll read the caption. Um, This advert showing Yoda and Lucas levitating is one of the many Panasonic adverts that feature the Star Star Wars characters in Japan. And um, yeah, so it's a picture of 80s George Lucas. Whited out, bro. White on white. Yeah, he's got like some billionaire um, all white skivvy pant combo going on he's cross-legged and he's floating um and yoda's sitting next to him floating as well and then there's a video camera that's also floating now the advert says national which but the caption says panasonic and then the ads that we'll talk about next episode, Patreon only, because I skipped for I, I looked at the next page and realized there's all these amazing adverts that we will watch then. Um, that's Panasonic as well. So I'm not sure why it says national on this advertisement. But um I got these um on the backs of in the 80s, they used to bring out these books in Japan, like a little mini magazine for each movie. And we're in this secondhand bookshop in Tokyo, book off. And um, they had these old, whatever they're called, souvenirs or whatever booklets. And so I got each of the original Star Wars ones, which rip. But then on the backs of some of the latter movies in the 80s, like it was like Willow and 
maybe the the bodyguard the bodyguard oh it had these ads on the back and so i was like oh i've got to get them just to put them in frames because they're um they're so sick and then this is the other one this isn't in the book but this is another one i've got and it's um oh my goodness it's George Lucas, Wicket, and Chewbacca riding a Panasonic satellite dish like a broomstick. Mm-hmm. And then you've got some, you know, some Japanese text here. It is just, it's haywire. And that one also says national slash Panasonic. Got you. So, Interesting. yeah, I don't know if maybe it was... I'm I'm just like dissecting what the the like predict like guessing what the Wikipedia would say, but I think Panasonic was a Japanese brand, and then when they entered America, they cha- they they branded as National, and then later on they just went, nah, let's just make a Panasonic. Yeah, and I wonder because Pan- Panasonic's still around, well, or even in yeah, and and National is. You know, Panasonic made maybe one of the worst video game consoles of all time. Oh, what was it called? The CDI. Got you. Our video game names. Um, like the Sat, the Sega Saturn. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, <clears throat> the CDI is famous for being the only console that had permission to use Nintendo characters, and they fumbled the bag horrendously so there's two zelda games and a mario game on the cdi that are both awful and people have been memeing on them for like over a decade like that because it's a cd console it had like full Ah. animation intros and voice acting and stuff and they are awful awful i'm so old school it's so weird to think of a mario game on a disc right doesn't seem right now Mm hawes Our second also oh actually I've got some um close ups here of the um Ooh, the video are look at that remote. Ooh. It's like a, a murder weapon and then the camera which is um just sick. And uh yeah, we'll watch those ads next 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 uh oh, ad, those ads rule. And uh yes. All right, our last also in 1988, Hawes. Hold on to your wallet. It's a Imperial Tie... No, what is it called? Tie Interceptor. Interceptor. Yep. Boxed above the toy, above a, uh, a, a, a lava planet. <laughs> and uh, with the caption, Kenner's toy line is revitalized in Brazil years after it ended in the US. Now, I have seen this box in at, at, at toy fair type places and, and celebration um, too, and it's expensive. It's it's like two G's or something, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. but man, that box it's it's so rad. If you if you're just watching the um, podcast, it's so it's got the toy, and then it's like it's all painted, and then it's it's above flying above this um, lava planet. There's an X wing in the background, and for the first time ever, I can notice. Um, is that the Millennium Falcon down there? It might be. But then there's a th- then there's a picture <laughs> of um, like an actual photo of Darth Vader asking Luke to reach out to the dark side in Empire Strikes Back. It's and, um and it says TV guide. Yeah, TV something. Mm-hmm. Maybe guide. It's like the TV guide logo. And um, it's 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 got power. It's power of the force um, logoing, which is the. The, the the really expensive end of the line um, packets that people are after, and then all the text is um, in Brazilian. If that's they a language, but I don't. Th- is Brazil Spanish? Do they maybe they just speak Spanish in Brazil? And it, and and it's Nave Imperial Royal with cheese. Everything sounds better in a foreign language. Man, that. I've seen that box at every celebration I've ever gone to and mostly every con I've gone to. Like 
there's always somebody at one of those specifically celebration really where there's just a guy who sells vintage star wars stuff and not a single piece is cheap he really just has to sell one thing and he's set for the weekend right i've seen this thing for like yeah two thousand dollars plus there's a guy that had one at um frankenson's as well oh okay sweet <clears throat> uh and that's it, horse. No that's more us. Should we um should we go back to the future? Yeah. Flick forward, see what's there? Mm-hmm. All right. I think you did it last time, um, mm-hmm. via guessing a a page, page. number. All right. <sighs> Oof. Where to Oh, wow. Where to start? <laughs> I've hit 2002, page 237, and we're in the post Attack of the Clones. Oh, wait there, I'll get. There we go. You got the Size Matters Not um, Yoda oh. poster. Uh, for the X IMAX, yep. And then there's. The DVD releases Star Wars Bounty Hunter on the PlayStation 2. Shoot. I got I got I gotta say, back then when those DVDs dropped with um like all the extra disc and the deleted scenes and the mm-hmm. documentary and the 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 trite commentary. Um oh that day. Tough. Like the menu, stuff. the menu screens, and mm-hmm. oh, do you remember getting Phantom Menace on Blu-ray for the first time, and one of the discs was Darth Maul's pattern? I was like, they just they know what to do here, man. <clears throat> Boy, they know how to put together a DVD package. Oof, man, and you were so stinging. Do you know what I mean? Cause you hadn't watched like a thousand billion YouTubes and all this. Mm-hmm. It was just like, mm-hmm. oh, ah. ah, 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 ah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the special features on those too. Man. Very good. All right. Very good. Um thank you to everyone. If um if you're watching this today, <laughs> then um I'm gonna be doing a live uh watching of the Acolyte trailer uh at nine thirty Pacific Standard Time. So twelve 12- 30 on the east coast and this on- is in the morning yeah so i gotta I get everyone off to work and school i'm gonna stay off the internet and then i'm gonna go live and um I check it out stay off the internet basically until i get off work tomorrow and uh that's gonna suck that's gonna be tough <sighs> so so why won't you watch it at lunchtime or anything Oh, uh, you know what? I didn't think about that. I probably can watch it at lunch, but I kind of like to sit down and watch it on my big TV instead of my phone the first time. You know what I mean? Totally. We'll see. We'll see. Totally. But yeah, I'm so p- I'm pumped. Very excited. Me too. I can't wait to see. Have you ever watched the bootleg one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't I ne- help myself enough. I never watched it. Honestly, probably a good call because it is bootleg quality. Yeah, I, I I remember just seeing images of it or something, and it's like, um, nah, it's a potato. Did you, did you see um, King Tom's tweet about it? Really funny, saying that the trailer should start off being like, for two years, this is how people watch <laughs> the Acolyte trailer, and it's like the potato quality, you know, on bootleg, and now, you know, and it bursts out of the screen. Perfect. <laughs> King Tom. Yeah, man. Um, all right, horse. Thanks so much. Thanks to everyone for watching or listening. Thanks to our um, Patreon supporters that um, that do that um, all the time. We're, we're pumping them out. We're, we're, I reckon we're every two weeks at the moment. Yeah. We've, we've, we're trying to do more, but then, um, you know. Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> things happen. <laughs> But uh, yeah, cheers. Great fun. And May, why did my, I didn't get any things come up when I put up my peace sign? Hey, there we hey, go. There we go. Got some balloons uh, coming up. Uh, May, that force be with you. See you later, guys.